welcome to your Life Mastery Workshop. Super excited to have you here with me. I just wanted to know <coughs> that you do, in fact, have your workbook. Um, if it's not printed out, that's okay. Um, you might like to scribble and scroll and then keep your actual template um, for a time when you can actually spend a little bit more time doing the thing. Um, I know sometimes for me, I, I feel like I've rushed it and I don't want you <coughs> to feel like you have to complete it all Um as we go, just allow yourself to take your time. Um, I am going to share my screen because I do have some slides here that I want to jump off of. Um, so can someone let me know if you can hear me okay? Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. So let's get into it. Um, I, I've called this a soul-led Life Mastery Workshop because this particular coaching tool, the Wheel of Life, is actually available everywhere. You can download it from your favorite life coaching template shop. It is everywhere. Um, the reason I do it in a slightly different way is because when I first was introduced to this, it was just ye old garden variety. I've been using that term all week because it came through in a session. So garden variety. Um, and what I found is that when I did this tool, um, it it kind of gave me the overall picture and it didn't look great because when I really started to look at what was going on in my life, I realized, oh, I wasn't actually living my life to its highest and best potential, but it didn't actually give me anywhere to go with it. So that's where I have put in a little bit of the Bell secret sauce. And of course, I'm inviting you to bring your own um, secret source into this as well. So as we get go through this workshop, I really just want to keep keep us on track that we understand that this is what you make it and it will make more sense as we go. But for those of you who are watching that don't know who I am, um, we have just been introducing ourselves um, off the recorded part of this and um, I'm about to say, hi, I'm Belle. I'm all of these things. No, I'm not. I I do all of these things. But my biggest thing is that I want to see people reach their most full and aligned potential. And it really is my life's purpose and mission to help people see what I see in them. And, you know, that might make me naive that as a, as a very um, heart set and empath that has hurt sometimes because I see potential rather than reality, but I'm really glad that I was created this way. And it, it's been such a privilege to be able to walk with predominantly women, although I do work with men and with children to help people see just how amazing they are and how unique and how valued and how loved they are. And all of these different qualifications, that's just the journey of how I help get them there, yeah? And each person is very different. And so sometimes it's a little bit of column A and then a tiny bit of column B, or maybe it's all column B, right? So you are as unique and your healing journey will be as unique as you are and not all things will work for all people. So my mission is to be able to help you to find out what it is that's going to help you feel that sense of deep self-trust, confidence, personal power and clarity ultimately in who you are what you stand for, what your purpose is in this life and, and what your legacy, your lasting legacy will be as well. Okay, so we're going to get into it and I'm going to go, I want to start up in the head and then I want to drop down into the heart space and into our solar plexus as we go, a deep sense of knowing um, and then we'll get into our creative centre as well as we move into working through our wheel. So I want to start here. I want to start with um, the idea of wellness versus well-being, what that is, what that isn't and, and how we can work with that understanding. Then I'll take you through the dimensions of well-being. So I want you to have a, um, a pen handy. Um, and a piece of paper or just use your workbook um, and then we'll get into our creation mode of the wheel of life and then the secret source that I've mentioned in some of the marketing you might have seen is that I'll teach you how to work with your lower 
and your higher mind and know how to tell which one is is running the show. Um, and it's not always a bad thing to have your lower mind running the show. Um, when you work with your lower mind, you'll probably find that there are lots of lessons, um, but that's it, not necessarily a bad thing. And then at the end, I will talk about my um, signature coaching program, which is Soul Alchemy, um, because really this, um, what we're doing today is a foundational tool of that program. So I want to share a little bit about that as well. So I want to open it up to you guys you can unmute or you can pop into the chat um, and I want you to share with me what wellness and or well-being might mean to you so feel free to unmute and share some of your ideas so Bill I'm thinking that wellness is more related to your physical and well-being might be more mental and uh, spiritual yep I, I would probably sit in that with that. Um, I haven't actually worded it like that, but, yeah, I would sit with that as well. Thank you. Anyone else? I was thinking along the same sort of lines as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Someone in the chat, give me a second. Um, yep. So someone said being able to conduct your life in the way that you want. Yep. So would that fall under wellness or well-being? Okay, thank you both. All right, awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? Or is it a bit like, oh, I haven't really thought about them being two different things. So I'll share with you a little bit about my frame of reference. Um, and I'll just stop the share as I do that, just in case there's anyone else who's writing in the chat. So wellness usually encompasses how we go about our physical, mental, emotional, social kind of thing. But well-being tends to be how we think about it, how we feel about it. Um, and wellness tends to be, well, we're in good health. But if you're not in good health, that means you're not in wellness, right? Whereas well-being, you could be in a state of relative not good health um, but you might have a very positive disposition about it you might be very accepting about where you're at and so therefore you could be said to be in a state of relative unwellness but in a state of relative well-being does that make sense so I often find that when people come to me for, I guess, health coaching or life coaching, they, they're really wrestling with a part of their, who they are, whether it's, usually it's physical um, or mental. It's one of the, the big pillars. Um, and they, they're really not feeling content and confident with where they're at. And so therefore it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Like their whole well-being is out the window because this one thing. And, you know, because we're women, I'll, I'll just say it, usually it's to do with their weight. If only my weight was this, then I would be that. Yeah, it's probably ye old stock standard that I hear the most. And it's like, well, what if your well-being could be really bold and robust even though you're working on your physical so I want you to be thinking in terms of that from now on. When you're working in a dimension of or a pillar is, is how I like to call it, or as you'll find with your wheel, it's like a, a segment. Um, hang on, I'll, I'm like a goldfish. I've got to read the chat. <laughs> um, well-being incorporates the mind and body and spirit. Wellness is just the state of health. Yeah, I would say that's pretty much a great summary of what I'm saying. Um, but it's not just physical health because it could be financial as well. So you could say, well, my physical health is good, but my financial health is not. Therefore, the way I think, my emotional health, my mental health is not great. So therefore, my well-being isn't great as well. But yes, um, usually you, you could say it in that sort of terms. Well-being is really about the whole person. Um, the, and, and you'll often hear me say it's about all of who you are. So all of who you are is going to be very different 
um, all of you are going to have a very different wheel, I hope, because you're all very different humans. And so we could have ye old stock standard pillars of well-being, and I'm going to share that with you now so you can see what I mean. And we'll just kind of run through the standard pillars. So physical health. I'm not going to ask you to call this one out. I just want you to write down how would you rate right now your physical health out of 10? 10 is it could not be better. You are yogaring, you know, naked with a city skyline behind you. That's how good your, your physical health is. All right. We're going to move quite quickly because I don't want you thinking too long in this space. Next, your mental health. How would you rate your mental health right now out of 10? How would you rate your spiritual health? Your financial health? How would you rate your environmental health? Now, this could be different for many different people. It, it could be to do with the environment you're in. It could be to do with your relationship to the earth. It could be to do with, um, do you recycle? Do you compost? How do you rate your intellectual health? How do you rate your career or your life's purpose with how you show up every day. Because remember, some people um, are not on a career path um, for a time being, um, for as a general rule. Um, so how would you rate how, your contribution to society, I guess is a good way of putting that, because if we have stay-at-home parents, you're still contributing to society. And then finally, how would you rate your social well-being as well? So now that we've got that out of the way, I feel like that's like the really cerebral kind of baseline. This is this is exactly what I teach in corporate. It's it doesn't go too far deeper. Um, although <laughs> I've woven in some of my magic a <laughs> little by little. Um, so I want to just ask, you know, if if we can go a little bit deeper now, because when you're looking to feel that you're accomplishing life mastery, it really has to come from somewhere other than here. It has to come from the heart space or deeper than that. Because for women, and even for men, because we all have feminine and masculine energy, we're saying yes to, to sitting with our feminine energy. Feminine energy is about creation. It's about power. It can be fiery. It it changes things, but it can also be soft and trusting and allowing and flowing. So when we're simply working up in our head all the time, that's our masculine energy part. And we're trying to outsmart ourselves through our head. And it's just not the best way to create anything new or to um, find yourself aligned to anything in your life. And I know it can be hard because we have this sense of, well, if I can think it, then I can create it. But it's more if you can feel it, then you can dream it, then you can draw it to you. And I'm not one of those coaches that says, oh, you know, manifest all the things. And I'll share a little bit later why, because sometimes the things are really low mind stuff. Because we think if we have the thing, it's going to make us feel, feel in however you want to describe it, happy, joy, fulfilled, content. And that's not entirely true because we only have to go and look around and see people who are what we would say is in relative poverty. And if you've ever traveled, you would have seen that sometimes the, the poorest of communities are sometimes the, the most simplest and the most happiest and the most content, even though they're facing other challenges that we don't have. And that's that mixture of wellness and well-being, right? So sometimes reaching for things is really good, wanting the thing that will make us the happy. <laughs> but sometimes it's a path that it's going to take you to learn a lesson, right? And so 
when we're working with our soul and our soul family and all of who we are and really coming into the heart space and being intentional, it actually helps us to sift through some of the mud, some of the, um, I guess, I guess whatever it is that's causing you to feel like you're not clear. And so it's something that we have to step into. We have to remind ourselves to keep coming back to it all the time. And the next point I say is say, it's saying yes to recognizing your deepest desires. And sometimes that can be really terrifying because what would it mean if you did sell all your possessions and you did take your life on the road and you did just work for the next meal that you had, right? What if you did completely change careers and you went into that thing you just can't stop thinking about because you heard in a workshop someone say, what would you do if you, if money and resources wasn't a, it wasn't a challenge? You know, I've had people say to me some of the things that they would do if money was not an issue. And it's like, wow, how far off our path we can be because we've got these responsibilities and I say responsibilities, they're real. I'm not saying they're not real, but our heart lives somewhere else. But is it our heart or is it a corrupt part of our mind that's telling us this is where your happiness will be? And I find this to be one of the hardest things is when we're coming into our own and we're really being intentional is it can be quite overwhelming when we're faced with choice but it can also be overwhelming when we're faced with this idea of, wow, I might not be who I thought I was all along. So it takes a lot of bravery to step into a soul led life because you're actually placing trust in a part of you, a very big part of you that you may not have had spent much time accessing. And so the last point here is saying yes to tapping into your intuition and so the only way to do that is to practice and to, and I like to practice with the really small stuff. And here in Sydney, I really love to practice as I walk out the front door, should I take my umbrella today? <laughs> and I always listen, always listen. If it's a yes and it's bright shining and I, and the app says it's not going to rain, I take it anyway. And I can't tell you how many times my colleagues have said to me, I can't believe you've got an umbrella. It wasn't supposed to rain. I'm like, aha, it's because I've learned, because I've been soaking wet many, many times because I didn't listen. But it's just the little things, right, when you learn to tap into your intuition. And obviously I get it wrong sometimes um, but on those things. But on the big things, I tend to trust now when I'm um, listening to my intuition, however that comes. could be a song on the radio. It could be a word that someone says um, just in passing, um, but it could be something more intentional where it's like, wow, like that thought that just came through was really profound. Was that me? Like, or was it, was it guidance? Well, I believe it's guidance when things like that happen. So I want you to be thinking about those things. And if you haven't written down um, those points, I think it might be helpful to write that down somewhere on your workbook or somewhere on a little notepad just to, to be living a soul-led life and come into true mastery. We really have to be working in both our feminine and masculine energy and being intentional every day to keep showing up, being brave enough to, to dream, being brave enough to not hold ourselves back and when we learn to dream from that aligned place, oh, that is your ultimate fulfillment because you might not have to work too hard to realize fulfillment. And then, of course, we get there by tapping into our intuition. All right. So in your workbook, you've got your 12 segmented wheel and most coaching tools like this, the Wheel of Life, only have eight. Now, I have 12 because we have 12 months of the year. And I do like the idea that we can break it into quarters as well. So before we actually get into this, I do want to make sure that we are um, ready to go into this. So that's why I've said here, number one is always begin aligned by using meditation of some kind. So I'm just gonna stop my share.
and I want to take us into an alignment meditation. If you've worked with me before, you'll know that I never plan the meditation. So what comes through comes through for everyone who is supposed to be here. So I'm just going to set my timer and um, get comfy, close your eyes, or just lower your gaze. Grab your favorite crystal, sit on the floor. Try not to lay down for this one because I want you to be staying awake. And just breathing gently, lengthening the spine. Lengthen the back of the neck by bringing the chin in just a little more and imagine that there's a cord attached to the top of your head that just lifts you up a little taller. You might find that you naturally take a few deeper breaths now as your body comes in to the stillness of your practice. And if you are new to meditation, that's okay. Simply listen to my voice and even if you are well experienced with meditation, you might find that your mind wanders and you can't settle. That's okay too. Sometimes when we are about to do big inner work, there'll be a part of us that is wrestling with this. So whatever your experience is in this meditation now, let that be enough. Let us focus our awareness purely on the breath for the next minute or two. As you breathe in, simply notice the feeling as your body expands to receive the inhale. And notice as your body surrenders, and it's seeking to relax, soften and settle with each exhale. Slowing down your breathing now. Slowing down, just another minute focusing on the breath. And it's likely that your mind is starting to wander. And that's okay. Simply bring it back. Even saying to yourself as you breathe in, I am breathing in. And as you breathe out, I am breathing out. And in this way, we're anchoring ourselves here in the present moment over and over again. And it's this simplicity of returning to your breath that is truly the message for you today. There's a simplicity here of returning to yourself, going inward. You don't need to seek external help or validation or guidance. Everything you need is within you, through the highest parts of you that are connected and well aware of all that they are, down to those most distant parts of you Perhaps you're in a child, perhaps a wounded part of you that, that chose to disconnect out of pain or sadness or loss. And so in this place, I want to welcome all parts of who you are. And as you breathe in, let it be a little deeper now and hold at the top of your breath for just a few moments. And as you exhale, feel where you're sitting. 
feel yourself returning inward. Perhaps place a hand on the heart space or on the upper belly around your solar plexus. And this position of your hand will simply draw your awareness deeper into yourself. Don't be afraid to return to you. For some of you, you've wandered far off, away from the centre of yourself for too long and this is your invitation to come back. And we often realise that there is everything and nothing in the centre of all that we are. Everything and no thing. Everything and nothing. Keep returning back to yourself. Simply receiving the breath and letting it go. Over and over again. And I wonder now if it feels comfortable for you to connect to the playful part of you. Usually it will be a spirited part of you, perhaps an inner child or perhaps a playful adult part. But this part will help you to visualise and to dream. And I'm going to ask you now, if time and resources and money was not a question, how would you spend the next three weeks if all of your responsibilities were taken care of and you were free? How would you spend your days? Who would you spend time with? What would you do for fun? What would you do for relaxation? I wonder if there are people in your life that you would choose not to spend time with. Remember responsibilities, obligations are gone. You just get to do you. Take a deep breath in and a long, slow breath out. Now this might be very much tied into what you just imagined or it might be completely different. If you could go anywhere in the world right now, leave this workshop, head out to the airport or a boat or a car, and get on your way and head to anywhere in the world, where would you go? Resources, time, responsibility, all taken care of. Where would you go? And I want you to notice if there's any part of you that wants to edit yourself or limit yourself. Do you think of something and then, mm, better not, can't do that because, just notice. And now take a deep breath in, long slow breath out. I want you now to mentally take yourself to the most beautiful place in the world, a place that you have been to or only exists in your mind's eye, take yourself to the most beautiful place in the world and see yourself standing there, no one else around. If you went there with other people, simply walk away from them. They'll be there, they'll be safe. 
And I want you to experience this most beautiful place completely on your own. There are no worries in a place like this. There are no demands. There are no responsibilities. The weather is exactly how you would like it to be. Your body feels incredible and in how you enjoy it most. Your heart feels full. It feels light. It feels expansive. You feel confident in a place like this. Nothing to worry about, nothing to plan, nothing to think about. In fact, this could be the most incredible place ever. Can you feel that? Can you experience it? Can you picture it? Take a deep breath in. Take a long, slow breath out. Come back to the room when you're ready. And just notice how your body feels, how your mind feels after doing that. Some of you may have gone far and wide. Feel free to share in the chat personally to me if you don't want to share with anyone else, but just or unmute yourself. Let me know how that felt. Did anyone notice that they edited themselves? Sometimes I will do that and I have to catch myself out. I will particularly edit myself if I am not um, feeling my best or if I have tried to go into what we're about to do, something like this, a coaching practice, um, if I haven't aligned myself, if I haven't settled, if I haven't given myself a little bit of space and time. Now, isn't it funny? I didn't do any fancy footwork in that meditation, right? Normally I will connect here and there and everywhere. That was a very, very simple focusing technique, very powerful in its simplicity. In fact, I think I might have said that. So it's interesting, yeah? We don't have to be fancy. Yes, Miss P. Yeah, I just wanted to say I love the simplicity of it because I found myself actually being able to not focus but just to think about that and then go, go through and my mind didn't really wander whereas sometimes it would. Yeah. So that was lovely. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome. Um, Yeah, I quite enjoyed bringing that forward actually. Yeah, the simplicity was lovely anyone else maybe the simplicity wasn't right for you and that's okay too um we have to just learn to meet ourselves where we're at as well some days you're all the things right some days it's magical unicorn land and other days i can't even find my breath you know so on those days we could probably look to it's a nice segue we could probably look to our wheel here's one i created earlier it's not real. I just made it up. It's not mine. Probably could be. No, it's not mine. I made it up. Put the numbers on. I wanted to give you an idea. Some days you are a bit wonky with your wheel. So can I just tell you, it took me about seven years to realize that if we look inside, that's the wheel. And then we can see it's a bumpy wheel. Does everyone get that? So if we're all a 10 on ev everything, it's a nice, even wheel that grows along, right? But if it's not a 10 on everything, like some are six and five and whatever, that means your wheel is bumpy. Du -dum, du -dum, du -dum. And that's how, that took me years. I'm a very bright human, but didn't get it. So that's why we call it the wheel, because if you're not fairly even in all areas, it's going to feel highs and lows. It's going to be great. It's going to be really not okay, like this sort of thing. So we're going for this idea of harmony um, rather than balance. I like harmony, but just, yeah, giving equal amount of time and space to some of the lower areas to make it kind of, it's really hard because I'm near it, but to make it so that one pushes up a little bit and so does that one, then we're going to have a half nice 
ride, right? And then we can work on these, push these out a little bit because this is quite low in this area. So we can push these out a little bit as well. So I hope that makes a visual sense to you and you don't have to wait seven years to figure that one out. Um, but let me get back into sharing my screen. And unless anyone wanted to chime in with anything else, I don't want to cut anyone off. Good, I'll keep going. So now we started with number one. We came in to ourselves. And I must say, if you have a faith, no matter what it is, always align with, I guess, the God of your own understanding is the best way to describe that, whether that is um, from a formal religion or whether it is your um, sense of, of what is up there or out there or um, I want you to always align to that as well because it's very powerful um, when we do have a faith or um, a belief system that we can connect to that and, and hold the truth of all that we believe as well. So I'm not saying to be very um, singular focused and self-focused. I'm definitely saying your faith is a big part of who you are. So always align to that as well. And now we want to choose the dimensions that light you up. I know for myself, environmental is not a dimension that lights me up. That's a job for me. That is, I have to get the recycling done and I have to rip out the stuff from the bin that the kids didn't do, right? That's not going on my wheel. I can tell you that much. So all of those dimensions that you wrote down before, some of them will be a dimension that lights you up, but some may not be at all. And that's okay because I've got some ideas on how you can um, fill those other areas. Um, and that's on your workbook as well. So you'll see that. So that's what I want you to do now. Just for the next minute or so, I'm going to set a timer so we don't overthink it. I want you to go through this page that has the list of all the different dimensions. I'm going to read them out to you as well. Um, it's heaps. Heaps and heaps and heaps. These are just some examples. And I want you just to tick off which ones, yeah, are cool. You like them. And then others, no, put a line through it, not interested. And then hopefully you'll come out with 12. If you don't have 12, if you don't have enough, you need to go back and look at it again or we can workshop that a little bit. Or if you have too many, then we can start to put them against each other. You can only choose one. Which one is it? Hurry up and choose, like that kind of thing. All right. So the clock is started. You've got about one minute. Let's go. So, is relationships going to be on your wheel? Friendships, intimate relationship, home environment, children, finances, career, self growth spirituality that could be religion as well uh, physical health and I'm going to break this down a little fitness weight loss next one relaxation purchases or what I call stuff and things <laughs> so I've given some examples here car home boat clothing objects home so stuff and things can be a whole dimension or you might have separate ones what about side hustles home improvement hobbies sport travel savings or investing Pets, extended family, study, fun. I always have fun on my wheel, just a little FYI. Volunteering, food, and that can include things like, you know, if you want to learn a skill as a chef, or a cook, or it could be things like nutrition, making sure that your nutrition is where you want it to be as well. Inventing, creating, social media. For those of you who have businesses, you might want to increase your social media presence. Maybe it's coaching or psych. 
Maybe it's having adventures. Maybe it's just having a meaningful life where you make a difference and it's very broad. So if that's yours, be careful because that could be tricky unless you know exactly what that looks like. And maybe addictions is on there. Maybe you want to get rid of some addictive behaviors. It doesn't have to be the big ones. It could be just little things. You know, you might have an addiction to people pleasing. All right. So hopefully you've got 12. Let me know. Who got 12? Okay, good. Awesome. Who got less than 12? More than 12? Me. <laughs> okay. More than 12 is challenging. Um, I, think and then I can whittle it down, but um, not that I'm going to have addictions on mine, but I was just interested in that, in that one because wouldn't you be wanting to bring that down rather than increase it and that would make your wheel bumpy? Yeah, so just invert it. So if so, 10 being the best your addictions could ever be means you don't have an addiction. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But good question. <laughs> and just on the on that, can I um, just what you were saying mm -hmm. before, um, in regards to um, aspiring to have harmony? So, are we trying to aspire to having a ten, like rating our um, things out of ten, like getting a ten for each element, or would we just be if we got eight for all of them, and that's the, the harmony? Is that enough? Yeah. So this will be infuriating, mm -hmm. but it depends on if it's enough for you. So, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, um, I, I will never, ever give any area a 10 because to me, because I'm visual with how I think, it's like, well, that's it. It can't, it can't ever be better than this. And some areas could actually expand. When I think of relationships, relationships can always expand and grow and become more intimate and more and and hold you more right so we would never want to place a relationship at a 10 we'd want to put it as a really healthy 9.8 right but it still gives that in my head that visual ability to expand and grow so so it's a real relative thing you're what you consider an eight may be a seven for me so it doesn't actually matter it's it, all that matters is for you when we get to this next part i'm going to ask you to repeat this phrase over and over again what would it take and so what would it take to get that relationship to a nine if it's not what would it take to get my finances to a nine if they're not what would it take to get my physical fitness to a nine? And so when we start to go from that point of view, it starts to open the door to possibility. So, yeah, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what number it is. It's just about creating this because we're working with that feminine of creation with the masculine of analysing and rating and setting ourselves up. Okay, so we're working with that ebb and flow, the harmony, if you will, of those two parts of our energy. Did that make more sense? Awesome. Awesome. So anyone need help getting to 12? Let me know. Otherwise, I will go on to... The next part so you've got this in your workbook so now we understand that visual um i want to talk a little bit about that secret source of the lower mind and the higher mind now so as you're looking at your various um, dimensions and you've started to rate them of what they are um i want you to be thinking in terms of if my highest part of me my highest part is connected to my ultimate wisdom. That I always think of my highest part as a she, probably genderless, right? But she does not worry. She has no fear. She has ultimate trust. Um, she knows she's taken care of. She knows all is well. Uh, she knows that, you know, this is an illusion, you know, that is filtered because all of us see the world same, same, but different. So ultimately, 
it's through the eyes of our own perception. So she she knows it's a bit of a it's a bit of a play going on all around us, right? But my lower mind does not have that ability to see. My lower mind wants the best for me. My lower mind or the ego, I'm not talking about being egotistical. It's the ego is that part that will constantly talk to you and try and keep you safe, although it will often hold you back. So your lower mind is always looking for how to bring you into alignment. We could use a different word there. We could say fulfillment, contentment. And your lower mind says, if I have the thing, then I'm going to feel good. And your higher mind just says, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and so she just meets you right there every time. Yep. Yeah. Let's rumble because you're going to learn a lesson with that one by wanting the thing, right? If I want that which is outside of myself, that which I have no control over, my higher mind is always saying, let's see how that frame of thinking works out for you, right? And it doesn't mean whatever the lower mind wants is going to be bad or bring a lesson or bring heartache or anything. It doesn't, it doesn't have to mean that. It could just mean you're forgetting that you already are all that you are. You already have everything and everything is always working out for you because I've never met anyone's life that didn't work out. They were born, they lived, they died. That's how life is, right? It's about what happens in the in-between and how we perceive it to be and what meaning we make of it that can be the ups and downs and make a challenging life. Now, it's not to say life can't be very challenging. It can, and I'm not spiritually bypassing here by mentioning this, but it really is about how we respond to everything that makes a huge difference in our life. So with that in mind, I want you to be thinking of what would it take to get this dimension to a nine, whatever that might be. So I want you to spend a few moments just thinking about that now. And does anyone have any questions at all? Feel free to ask. And now um, I have someone who wanted to be in the hot seat. Just let me know if you're still keen to do that. I'm just going to send you a message. And if you are keen to jump in and we can workshop this together, then you can unmute yourself. I've got two of you going, oh, if the other person doesn't want to, then I can. <laughs> unmute yourself, go. <laughs> if you want, if you don't, that's okay. I'll do it if you want, Belle. Okay, cool. I didn't I thought you were messaging the person. I was. Oh, okay. I think they bailed. Okay. <laughs> that's totally okay too. <laughs> All right. So Nat, do you want to share with us what you've got? <clears throat> My whole 12. Um, thank you for that. No, that'll take way too long. Um, I'm just doing a pretend one on the screen now. So, so how many have you got that you've rated less than six? Um, probably only one, two, three. Okay, awesome. Choose one of those that's relatively not too deep, personal, revealing, just whatever you're most comfortable to share. Okay. Fun. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
<laughs> what did you rate fun? Well, probably a six. I mean, yeah, most of my things I rate fairly like seven or eight, but yeah. Yeah, but and that, that's fun, such fun a goes point. up and down. I want consistent yeah. fun. Yes. But also you tend to be, if you don't mind me sharing, a, a glass half full. You you tend to be like, hey, we, we make lemonade out of lemons. Like you that tends to be your sunny disposition, right? Yeah. So that's how I see you anyway. So with your fun, yes. why is it not a nine? I think it's responsibilities of life. Okay, good, good answer. Mm. So that feels heavy. That feels like a burden. It feels like not freedom. Mm. So what would it take? So that's where we've got that lower mind saying it feels like heavy and burden and not freedom, right? And what I really want is this. So just from that angle, I want you to be thinking about what would it take to be a nine? Just from your lower mind. Uh, from my lower mind? I could think yeah. from a higher mind. From my lower mind, having someone else help with some of my responsibilities, I suppose. There you go. And yeah. so what, what that immediately brings up is a whole cascade of other things that if you dwell in that area, it's going to keep pulling you down. Agree? Mm -hmm. So... You said that you could easily do your higher mind. Let's do it. What would be your higher mind? Well, my higher mind would say that you can probably create fun in things that are mundane and normal as well. You go to the top of the class, you get the sticker. <laughs> yeah, that was really amazing. I could not have said it better myself. Does everyone get that? It was just we could have gone in one direction. Yeah, but Nat's done loads and loads of inner work and she is sunny. She makes lemonade all the time, right? And so so give me an example, Nat, of something you could do to make fun even though. Well, for example, this weekend when I'll be with my children all weekend. <laughs> and the three days in the rain, yes. <laughs> I could embrace trying to play some games with them and do things with them. And obviously, even though I don't really like preparing food, they really appreciate food. So I could make them a really nice dinner or cook a nice soup or do something that they would appreciate and then they'll actually, I might get some fun from their appreciation. There you go. That's awesome. Hmm. Does anyone know how to do the um, response buttons on zoom does anyone want to give the thumbs up do you agree or the heart do you agree that sounds amazing so we're not pretending that life doesn't exist and has happened but Nat's given us a really good example of you know how to pull yourself out of that lower mind so it's going to be heaps easier now for her to to stay in her center of alignment her contentment her fulfillment because her higher self is going to be there holding her in that space Yes, there is, you know, a lack of having support around and that is challenging. We're not pretending that doesn't happen. But if I just do this, that will actually feel pretty good. So it doesn't create um, this gaping hole. Yes. I'm a bit worried that that depends on how other people react to what you have done mm -hmm. um, so that if they appreciate it, then I will feel fun. Mm -hmm. um yeah, that's true. because if they don't appreciate it then what happens then yeah you know so the actual process of doing it is what is the fun and then whether they respond positively or not um is you know it's immaterial i'm, I'm, I'm not going to judge or be point pointed about that i just it's my thought process about what you're yeah. saying it's I'm, and it's exactly I'm, right go now i'm good at accepting unappreciative children because i'm also <laughs> a teacher and I am also a teacher too. <laughs> so, no, I don't expect my children to be appreciative. I, I'm totally okay if they're, they're not. If they just enjoy their meal and then they go back to their room. <laughs> it's as good as it's going to get. Yeah. 
Um, really great reflection, Janelle. Thank you. And awesome sharing as well, Nat. Now that we've done one, do you want to do another, Nat? Sure. Another one of the low ones. Yeah. Travel. Mm -hmm. Well, I could say travel slash adventures because they okay. were, which is a, the similar thing that I just don't have the time or the finances at the moment. And I've had a couple of years of going on some reasonably fun holidays, but this year I don't have anything planned mm -hmm. and I have other money commitments that I have to put money towards. So, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know. So, I don't know how to make that happen. Yeah. So what have you rated it, this one? I'm still going to say it's a six because, yeah, I'm a glass half. I can't put anything under five. You can't. You can't do it. No. That would be wrong and bad. Um, no. So that's interesting to me. So so if it's a six, um, what would it take to get to a nine? Well, no, so it is a six because I am going on one little mini holiday to a friend's wedding. There you go. So you just did what I was going to suggest, like yeah. look for the small things. So you've yeah. actually got one already. So yeah. it's interesting in, in the opening, the opening argument was, you know, well, I haven't got anything planned. Well, actually, I do have this one thing. And so an adventure could also be that you decide to figure out which direction you're going to drive your car in and you're going to drive two and three quarter hours in that direction and stop at the town that you get to. I have never done that. Yeah. <laughs> so you could mm. just don't go east because um, yeah. you won't go very far. Um, but, you know, that's that's just an idea. That's, mm. you know, well, I was going to say it's low cost, maybe jump on a train. But um, but it's it's just an idea, you know, of something that you could do. Um, yeah. you, you and the kids could say, okay, everyone write down a town within reason um, in New South Wales and whatever we pull out of the hat, that's where we're going for the day or whatever it is, right? So there are different ways of creating a little element of fun. Um, oh, and that kicks um, two segments for you as well. So there, there is a different way of doing it. Travel doesn't have to be, you know, international travel. I often hear people say, oh, well, I'm not going to Europe all that way just for two weeks. It's like, why not? Like you can, <laughs> just because we're Aussie, <laughs> you don't have to go for six weeks, right? Um, but yeah, you really can. So um, it's it's the way we limit ourselves. That's that's really what I wanted to highlight with this um, with this wheel and how we can use those different parts of our mind um, to really help us come into an alignment. And for some of us keep in mind that you might want to be in a season where it's not extraordinary and it's amazing and it's a nine. Like that's sometimes that's a lot of energy and you might be in a season that's more like an autumn where you've had the big thing and you've been in your summer and now you've come into your autumn stage just for a while and then you go into your hibernation stage of winter for a little while and then you'll come out again in your spring. So it's it's important to kind of understand that there is always an ebb and flow. Um, we can't always be up. It's just impossible. Nature doesn't do it like that. There's always a season of growth and then stagnation and renewal, right? Why would we think that we're anything different than that? And I think it's something to do with this masculine energy that's been you know, in the world for so long, we have to be bigger and better and always growing. Like, no, nah, we need time. We, we need time and space. Feminine creations, we need a bit of time and space. We're cyclical in our bodies. We're cyclical in our minds. You know, does that make sense? Mm. So now that you've seen a little bit of hot seating action, does anyone want to have a go? Does anyone want to ask about one of their segments perhaps? I mean, there's some pretty wise women in this group. Um, now's a great time to ask. Hi, Belle. I'm not necessarily volunteering, but um, can you just go over the relationship between the low and the high self yep. again? Yep. I didn't quite sure understand can. it. Yeah, cool. What specifically? was making you go, hmm, 
hmm, don't, not quite sure. I wasn't quite sure how to, like I've done my ratings. Yep. I wasn't quite sure how to, um, and I assume that it's the ego that's driving a lot of that. So then how do you apply the higher self? It, yeah, it could it could well be. Um, do you want to give us one that's fairly fairly not too revealing that you could share with us? Uh, home improvement. Yeah, great, great idea. So, your how would you rate that at the moment? Uh, it's three out of ten. I've got all Ooh, these things nice. that I need to do. Nice juicy one. Okay, good. <laughs> Just, Love it. Okay, and cool. Piling up. <laughs> yeah. So it's a three at the moment, and mm. that's and so when you said, "Oh, there's things that I need to do," how do mm. you feel when you think about that? Uh, it gets a bit overwhelming, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So instantly, because we know it's overwhelming, we know it's not coming into your higher mind. If your home environment was a nine. How would it feel? Amazing. Yeah. Go go deeper for me. What what does amazing feel like? Um, like a sense of accomplishment and like, okay. you know, being able to tick and get these things off my list. Yeah. Oh, mm. okay. Good. So achievement, accomplishment. Okay. It's still um it's still quite in that lower energy. It's very lower mind energy. So mm. tell me what amazing feels. Because when you said amazing, that's high energy. Um, well, I, I suppose because I live by myself, so if I was able to achieve those, uh, it would be, yeah, quite rewarding. It would, it would mean what? You'd be I'm proud sure. of yourself? Yeah, like proud of myself, yeah. Yeah, and if you were proud of yourself, how would that feel? Good. Yeah, mm. good yeah. We've gone down in energy again. Can you guys <laughs> feel the difference in the energy? It's like, yeah, no. So you're mm -hmm. editing yourself there. I can feel that. Can anyone else feel that? So we went, mm -hmm. yeah, we're getting a few nods. So, and, and remember, a lot of these women have done this many, many times and they've heard me talk like this before as well. So we're going amazing, nine, meh. And then we're down again. Then good. It's like when someone says fine, I'm like, Fine is not a word. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. So good, it, no, doesn't feel mm. good. If you accomplished, if you ticked things off on your mm. own as the incredible, confident, independent woman that you are, good. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, and, that, and freedom. Yes, that's <laughs> what I was looking for. You would feel free. That's because mm. those constraints you have in your mind, gone. Gone, yeah. excuse. Yeah. So do you see the difference when we're working through the ego, lower mind and the higher self, higher mind? There's so much more expansion and there's all these reasons why the lower mind kicks in and it limits us. So what would it take for you to, oh, this is, this is a lot. What would it take for you to <laughs> believe that you can do this? Uh, you don't have to answer that but that's the question that just came what would it take so I'll write that down what would it take for me mm. to believe that I can create a home environment of a nine plus and that's where I would in, encourage you to just roll that phrase that question over and over and over in your head every time you look around your house and see what is not done what what is a three you say mm. to yourself what would it take to be a nine and look around over and over again? And for some of your areas, this is everyone, not just for yourself, some of your areas are going to require this because you have pushed down and down and down even the possibility for so long. And that's because it's your lower mind has been feeding it. If only it was this, I'd be okay. If only this happened, this would be great. If only, if only. And really the message is, well, what would it take to be a nine in this place, even though all of these rules and patterns and beliefs that I've decided must be there, even though that doesn't change at all. So it's about finding that internal contentment. And it might mean, and I'm not suggesting this is a 
this is anything, but it might mean, well, your home environment's a three. Well, it might mean that this isn't the right home for you. I'm not saying that that's the case, but it might mean the same if we're looking at um, friendships. Sometimes you have friends that can be challenging. It's like, well, it might mean that they're not the greatest person for you to hang around. It might mean that we need to change how we make meaning of those relationships. Um, if you're really trying hard to be the top of your game in sport and it might mean, well, you know, in this lifetime, you might not be an Olympic gold medalist in diving, even though you really love it. Like, so it's about understanding that we've put all of these conditions on ourselves um, for whatever the reason. And it's about really unpacking that over and over again to find ultimate contentment, fulfillment and alignment. So is that a little bit less muddy now? Did it answer your question a little bit? Yeah, and I think it's just going to take practice as yeah. well. So just yeah, exactly. It, thinking that way. Yeah, and we're rewriting that story. So we know with the way our brain is wired that if we have been thinking a certain way, we have a lot of neural pathways that will light up every time you think in that way. So in fact, we're hardwired to think in that way. And usually it's going to be somewhat negative. Um, we have a negativity bias built in. It's just part of our evolution of how we work because we're always kind of subconsciously checking are we safe or are we not safe? So we have this inbuilt system to and and it's hard when we're trying to make a change into the more free and open and possibility way of thinking because we've got these super lane highways of the negativity. Oh, but we've got this, this, this and this, and this is the evidence of why I'm not being able to get to a nine, right? But if you just start very gently with that, what would it take question? Well, what would it take? That's a tiny, tiny little dirt track of a new pathway. And if you think that over and over again, well, what would it take? Oh, well, you know, well, maybe it's not so bad. Actually, may I give you a very firm example? I live in the smallest little cottage in the history of ever. I have to actually go outside if I want to change my mind. So when I moved to this place, I struggled so much with this house for many reasons but the reason I chose this house was how cute and small it was right but it became just awful it felt so uncomfortable for me and it wasn't until I started to change how I was thinking about it little tiny dirt track over and over again okay well it's nice that it only takes 10 minutes to vacuum little dirt track oh it's a one one like a donkey track now you know over and over and over and now I do not use swear words when I'm in my kitchen because it is so small and I can't, I cannot ever not wash anything. It has to be done at the same time. There's no bench space. So it's, it's amazing how you can just build it over and over one thought at a time until suddenly you've got a new super lane highway going in that better direction. My house hasn't changed size the way I think about it has, and that takes practice. So you nailed it. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Or if you have anything else as well, Sue. Anyone else have a question, comment, want to share something? I do. Yes, I'm I interested. So. <laughs> I'm interested to know from the other ladies, um, when you're thinking about your own value and about taking some action, actual action to think about making yourself feel precious, so not necessarily just, oh, you know, I'm a good person or I, I'm great because I'm a great mother or, or whatever. But if you wanted to do something to make yourself feel like you were precious, what would you do? So I'm looking at everybody to give me a bit of an idea. What would you do? Great question. Spa. A day at the spa. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. Um, so I just recently, as in last week, had forgotten how much I enjoy salsa dancing. So I just mm -hmm. did a sorted a place here in Miranda and went and had a trial left it, uh, lesson and it just lifted my spirit. So I've signed up for a five-week course. Excellent. Amazing. Anyone else?
All right, we're going to move on. Thank you. I, yeah, thank you. I want to go into your the um one of the last pages, second last page of your workbook, and it says choose your top three areas that are above a six. And I want you to write down now why these areas are actually working for you. Because seven and above really means that it's something that's important to you. It makes you feel good. It lights you up. And I wonder if someone can share with us one of their dimensions that's really working for them because I always find that it's quite inspirational to hear that from other people. Who's got one they'd like to share? Nick, I reckon you've got one that's above a seven. I had the inventing one um, because I am in currently in the process of writing my story mm -hmm. and it's been something that I've been wanting to do for ages and it's finally starting to come out. So it's making me feel creative again which is a big part of who I am and I've probably been suppressing it for a long time mm -hmm. and so that is the perfect example of when the lower mind and the higher mind um, are at play you've been suppressing it for a long time that's your lower mind that knows the story that has the story that's ready to expand it but just won't and then your higher mind is like it is safe. We can do this. It feels good. Oh my goodness. I'm going to keep going. I can't stop. Oh my goodness. I've got to do this more. And you expand into it. So can you describe what it feels like when you get on a bit of a roll and you write? I don't really feel anything. I good. mean, I sort of, it sort of comes in, in waves. I sort yeah. of get so into it like I think I told you I completely missed my stop on the train because I was so in the zone I was just yeah. typing it in the notes section of my phone yeah and then looked up and went oh shit I've gone four stops too far <laughs> yeah so that's that's an example of when you're in flow state and a, an intrinsic part of flow state is timed association it's where your whole focus is in one place so if you could apply that um, to everyone, every other part of your um, wheel um, and think, okay, well, what would it take for me to be in flow in this part where, you know, I can be fully absorbed in this. I can, I can feel at my best. I can feel completely undistracted. Um, that could be a way to really elevate your wheel and make it feel a lot stronger. So that could be for you and could be for anyone else, but for you, that's what you're looking for. Okay. And you might actually find that after this, you go back and look at your wheel and go, actually, like I've written here, pets. I love my pets, but they're not going to be on mine. I tell you that much for sure. They're not going to be on mine because when I think about it, it feels heavy. It feels a burden. Um, I have to come home all the time to my dog. Like I love him but he's definitely not going to be on my board. And I'm glad he doesn't speak English because he would feel betrayed. But all I'm saying is, so, so I don't want you putting things on your wheel just because you think they have to be there. And that goes for everyone, not just talking to you, Nick. It's just, it doesn't have to be like that. This can be the most selfish piece of paper you've ever had. Yeah. And it can just be, hello, there's one. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think for everyone you need to have the permission to be as selfish as you want on this piece of paper. You could have one that has, I'm just looking at my crystal here, you could have one that says crystals. It's like when I buy crystals, I love everything, right? I don't care what it is. I've mentioned before we've had someone who wrote dresses. Buying dresses was their thing. If they buy dresses, they're just happy. And it doesn't matter what it is that makes you happy. If it makes you happy, it makes you feel more expansive. If you feel more expansive, you're going to be the better version of yourself. 
So it's it can be as simple. It could be nail polish. It could be anything um, that just you put on your thing to make you feel happier. Thank you for that share. That's awesome. Does anyone else have anything that they would like to ask about, comment on, share? So I just wanted to say about the social well-being. Mm -hmm. so I actually had that has an eight on my thing because I just find that um, sometimes, you know, I do go inwards and I don't want to socialise with anyone because I'm just filling my cup up. Mm -hmm. um, but when I do that and, you know, and I do go and have coffee or we go out or what have you, I get so much out of whatever we're kind of doing, mm -hmm. whether we're sitting and talking or we've actually gone out to a comedy show or whatever. Um but it just really does, um, my friends get a lot out of it and I get a lot out of it too. And it just kind of um, is a platform to whatever I'm doing, springs me into the next thing that I'm doing that week. Yeah, love that. So mm. so that could be a real theme for you in a few different areas. That social component might actually help to prop some of those dimensions up. Mm. so if again like I said with Nicole for flow yours might be with um having you know if you're going to have fun for example it needs to be with a friend you know fun fun on your own maybe not as fun I'm just making it up mm -hmm. but it, but it could be anything you know if you want to um, do something around your home doing it on your own feels hard but if you invited a friend over and you had a wine or and you did something together mm -hmm. that could feel really good as well so yeah. that's little ways because that could be the season you're in, filling yeah. your cup is actually also being with others as well. Yeah. So. Um, but, yeah, when I'm um, filling my cup, it's curled upon the, the land with a good book. Yeah. <laughs> well, rest, really rest, just is, being... yeah, rest is one of those things for yeah. me that has its own dimension. Mm. So I would list a whole bunch of things under rest. What does that look like? Hammock, mm. book, not talking to anyone for 24 mm. hours, getting off my phone, not text messaging, all the things. That would be a whole bunch of different things for me. Mm. So it can really be as as big as you want that section to be, filling my cup. Um, if I had a fill my cup section, I would have things like a massage and a facial, right? So very different. It's going to be very different for each one of us. Yeah. Um, I want to move in just to finish up because I'm very aware of time. Um, so I've gone over, apologies. Um, the last step in this, and this is your blueprint, is I want you to give yourself one quarter. So you're going to have three areas that you are going to focus on for the next month. So a quarter of your chart is just going to be three areas. It doesn't matter which ones. It could be three that are very strong. It could be one that's a bit weak. It could be all three that are weak. It, it, there's, not, there's no right or wrong. But I just want you to think about one quarter that you're going to work on for the next month. Now, you could do, if you wanted to move a little slower, you could do one segment per month for the next 12 months. But I do think if you start to get the hang of looking at your chart, hanging it on the wall somewhere, um, having it as a visual representation that you can actually work on and impress upon your subconscious. Actually, these three areas are important to me. This is what I want to see um, a really healthy eight or nine in. Um, you will actually start to see change. And we know that that's super good for our brain in terms of dopamine. So a dopamine is a neurotransmitter that actually helps you to feel more motivated and find more pleasure in daily life. Dopamine is found in your phone scrolling. Dopamine is found in eating chocolate. Um, those are not always going to be the best habits for you. Dopamine could be found for you in make, keeping those promises that you're making to yourself right now by going, actually, this is what I'm focused upon. This is what I really love. And this is what I want to um, be looking at and, and up leveling in. Oh, look at that. I actually did that. I'm working towards something. So it's about creating more healthy dopamine activities that can actually help to lift your life up even more, help to lift your confidence and make you feel like actually life is pretty good. So think about those three areas that you can work on for the next month. And I want you to think of, one or two actions that you can do right now that will help to get you in the direction of moving towards a nine 
um, or at least maintaining if it's a really high number anyway. And I've also written in the workbook here, create a manifesting affirmation to say daily. So um, let me give you an example. If fun is on my list, a manifesting um, affirmation for more fun could be, I allow myself to be lighthearted in all ways. So that means it's not negating that there's some challenging things, but if I allow myself to be lighthearted, then I'm going to see things in a different way. I do teach laughter yoga, so I do teach people to laugh in the face of adversity. Um, so that's one thing. If it was to do with my um, physical health, um, it could be an affirmation such as my body works in harmony and responds well to, to hydration. And then I'm kind of bringing in a few different things that I want. Does that make sense? If anyone wants help with the manifesting statement, now is the opportunity to ask. And just remember when you're coming up with that manifesting affirmation, it needs to be in the present now that you believe. So it's not if you if your physical health and you're looking to run a marathon, I run however many Ks, is it 50 Ks? I run a marathon easily. Like my body, actually my mind would just go, no, you're an idiot. No, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> there's no, you wouldn't even get to 5K. So it's it's not something that I'm congruent with, but how about if, I, if a goal of mine was to run 50 Ks, it would be something like, thank you, 42. 42 is the same as 50. Um, 42, thank you. Um, quick typing. Um, if, if my goal was to run 42 Ks, it would be my body. No, I don't believe that either. Um, I, I am able to train my body to run. Yes, I believe that I can do that. Does that make sense? But I'm not putting, <laughs> not putting a number on it. Um, yeah. And, and run is relative because I had a foot Rico, so I can run it just feels weird. Um, so, so do you see what I mean? I'm not reaching too far. I'm not saying, Oh, I can run 43 kilometers. Like, no, I'm not, I never will do that. So I want you to think in terms of when you are creating a statement, you can be quite broad and general, but make it believable for yourself. So if you're seeking an intimate relationship, it's like, I have the most amazing partner in the world. Well, I don't see anyone, so that can't be true. What about I am getting ready to be in a relationship that is fulfilling and loving? That's more believable. Anyone have any questions at all? because I am going to wrap it up if we don't. Of course, you have my number. You can always ask me um, when you've thought about this a little bit more or if you feel like you're not quite getting that feeling of expansion, I'd love you to um, reach out and ask me if you have anything specific. Um, but I will wish you good night. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, it's been lovely. Thank you for contributing to the conversation as well. It has been such a pleasure. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys really soon. Um, I did you. mention, thank you. I did mention that um, I wanted to chat about my soul alchemy course, but I feel like we're out of time. So we can, we can chat about that another time, but thank you everyone. Thank you. Are you sure, Belle? You don't want to talk about it in a few minutes? Well, if you, yeah, if you're happy to stay on, I'm happy to chat about it. Um, but if you want to head off now, um, that is okay too. So I will, sure. Uh, um, Miss P, you want to, you want me to? Yeah, I'll listen to you. Yep. Yeah, cool. Let me find, let me find my, here we go again. What can you see right now? It's just blank. Blank. Yeah, it's telling me that it's stopped. Okay. That should show the lower higher mind. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So you'll know that if I ever um give you a testimonial, 
I make up the name and that is certainly not Hayley. It's just someone that I found in a picture. Um, so I always try to keep um, everyone like confidential. But this is this is an, is an example of um, what has happened for Hayley, quote unquote, um, in her soul mapping journey. So soul mapping is the technique that um, I have been downloading for the last four and a half years. And it's a way of understanding the different parts that we have. So I've been talking about different parts all the time. And I do that. I'm doing that on purpose because it's parts with a capital P um, because these are very different aspects of ourselves that are coming out. There's an aspect of me that's the mother. There's an aspect of me that's the teacher. But there's also the aspect of me that's the, the solo traveler. She get, got to pop out again recently and I'd forgotten that she existed and how courageous that she is. Um, and just before um, we were talking Pravina about how, you know, like I, I, I don't really travel on my own anymore, but it was my whole early adult life. That's what I did. So that part had been quite latent in me and it was so good to be um, with that part of me again. So we can actually leverage various parts of ourselves. They have incredible strengths and they also have some really challenges but those challenges are the insight into the wound. And when we know what that wound is, we can actually start to heal it and transform that part into its most aligned version. So we don't actually have to live in that wound anymore. So as an example, when I was thinking about traveling again on my own, there was a lot of anxiety there. A lot of fear came up um, about leaving the, the kids, the house, leaving the country. What if the plane crashes, what if I never get back? All of this just silliness. And so it really just showed me that there was a sense of not feeling safe. So all I needed to do, all I needed to do was just keep coming back to my sense of self and questioning a bit CBT, um, what's the worst that can happen? Where's the evidence for what I'm holding? And how is this costing me my joy in this moment? So the, these are how we can work with these different parts. And and as we can see on the screen, Haley was able to overcome obstacles like that and she can find new purpose and fulfillment. Just like I was, I could actually go away and enjoy myself. And when challenges did come up while I was away, I could just say, okay, well, what's this costing me in this moment to even be con considering those thoughts right now? So that's what um, soul alchemy is all about, using your, um, your, your individualized soul map to help bring you into a place of true alignment and transformation. So the next steps I want to share with you is, is here. It's, it's coming on a journey with me, a transformative journey um, for three months or for six months and where we weave together these um, the integral players within you that are in your soul map. And um, it truly is about discovering, having the courage to, to, to look into it as well, those different parts and what they actually mean. And so I guess what I'm really proud of with Soul Alchemy and, and how I actually approach this, um, this work um, is the fact that I weave all the different parts of what I do. So somatic movement is anything that is designed to get you out of your head, out of your analytic brain and into your body and get you moving in that way. It could be vigorous. It could be very, very gentle. So you yin yoga is a good example of something that's a somatic movement that is um, teaching you to let go of the thinking mind. Obviously, energy release and breath work will help to shift energy as well in that. Um, but we have to allow ourselves to go into a release state. And so that can be quite challenging. So that's where I've got, um, you know, you've worked with me before, all of you. So you actually understand that we, we do some muscle testing and we do some energy releasing. Um, and then we do lots of questioning. What would it take? Um, and the CBT style of questioning as well, um, moving into that place of, okay, well, if I think in this way, this is the result I get. So what if I thought in this way, would that bring me to the result that I'm looking for? And it's about understanding how to navigate those paths as we go along. And so my next journey is going to start in July um, of 2024. And I'm looking to create a space where weekly we come together in circles so that we can show up like this as the wise women that we are, where we can support each other. Um, and then, of course, not only online, but doing 
retreats, uh, weekend retreats and day retreats are also planned. And um, every single month um, until the end of the year, I've got um, a 90 minute space booked um, in a local yoga studio so that you can come along to a 90 minute journey um, if yoga, yes, meditation for sure, but a place of deep healing as well. So um, not quite sure what the name of it will probably just be called Radiant Journeys, to be honest, because it'll be whoever's turning up what we're actually doing on that night. But there'll be lots of rolling around the floor in yoga poses and breathing deeply and just relaxing <laughs> deeply into our bodies. As women, I found that, you know, a lot of our um, issues with our nervous system come from this pervasive patriarchal state that we live in, which means that most of us have walked with keys in our knuckles before. Most of us have thought twice about walking down certain streets. Most of us have noticed that we're being stared at and we didn't want that. Most of us have known that we can't just be as free as what men are. And so as we come into these spaces together, it's about nurturing the nervous system and about knowing how through all of these practices you can see on the screen, how to come back into the safety and sanctity of our own experience. Um, so I'm really passionate about helping people to find their, um, their inner wisdom that takes them into that sense of safety as well, because we're either safe or unsafe. Um, and I want, I want you to come back to that safe space within yourself. So that's basically soul alchemy. So if there's any questions in all of that, I'm happy to, to, um, to talk to you about that. Um, in a nutshell, it's really about noticing what parts of you are needing support. Um, just like if we looked at a little child and we saw that they were in pain, we'd want to help them. Well, that resides in us as well. And so um, self-care without the guilt is a big one. And I, I know you guys that are, that are here watching and I know that you do this very well. Um, but there's always a different stage that you'll be going through. It never ends. Um, and I was speaking with someone recently talking about how when we we get to a certain place in our journey and we think, oh, yeah, I've got this. I feel pretty good. And you might go for a week or two weeks without doing the thing that actually helps you to feel good. And then suddenly a different behavior creeps in. Maybe it's an eating or a drinking thing, or maybe it's listening to things or watching things that actually don't lift you up anymore. And then suddenly you're three, four months down the track and you haven't done that thing that you used to do all the time that felt good. And so I often say, well, who do we think we are to think that we can get away with that? You know, Zen monks will meditate for hours and hours and hours a day they take themselves out of their normal home and they go into the monastery and they that's all they do is work on their stuff and yet here we are speaking from my own experience do a little workshop and then oh I'm vibing for a few days and then suddenly I wonder why I don't feel great a few days after that it's like wow this this we have to understand that just like brushing our teeth or having a shower every day, um, that's what this is. It's coming back to self every single day and allowing yourself to expand. And it does take a lot of courage and it does take a lot of intention and it can feel exhausting sometimes. But that's because there's a part of you that's doing that, that's making you feel like you can't show up for yourself first every day. So I hope that that makes some sense. I hope that you understand um, a little bit more about why I'm so passionate about bringing this journey forward. Um, and it really is, this picture was taken in Thailand, actually, with some of the women that I was with. It really is about linking arms together um, and building that beautiful community that we can journey together in a, in a way that feels safe. Um, and so as above, so below, you know, we journey on the inside, we journey together as women um, collectively on Zoom and also hopefully in person as well. So that is it for me. If you guys are interested in learning more about the next three to six month journey starting in July, please let me know. Um, there is a huge discount for early bird um, enrollment and also um, an extra healing session that is just for you as well. So I have my group healing sessions that I'll do, but also um, some of you jumped in on, on earlier 
iterations and that's my dog um and I think a child just got home um and when some of the participants had their own bespoke healing um it was something that they could just listen to um on repeat that was actually guided for them um just to help keep shifting them into a state of safety so let me know if that is something that you're interested in and this is the question <laughs> that I want to throw out there if you are wanting to make a change and you don't do anything about it how are you going to feel in six months time hmm. so it's just something to think about because we often say to ourselves oh no I'll get to it when and sometimes when never comes so it's something for you to think about um, if you want to be part of a beautiful community where women support women, just like today, it couldn't have been more perfect having women supporting each other and asking questions and being together in this. Um, that is the environment that I always like to foster and, and co-create together. So that is it from me. Thank you for choosing you today because not many people do. And so it's a wonderful thing you're doing for yourself to look at what your dimensions are, but also it's for those um, that are around you as well, because when you're aligned, you're actually going to show up so much better and be such a light for other people and your light will actually illuminate others as well. So thank you. And I say namaste to you and salute you for taking this time for yourself. Thank you, Belle. Namaste to you too. Thanks, Thank Bill. You. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye.